what I have here today, Saturday, September 24th, 2016, and we'll do the confirmation with the, uh, the watch. Uh, it's a continuation of the taking apart the Elgin. Uh, my battery done picked up and died on me while I was filming this video. So I'm going to do, uh, this is the part two because uh, I'm not going to edit this stuff. And maybe uh, that was uh, God's way of telling me I was making it too damn long in the first place. Uh, so where was I? Oh yeah, so while I was uh, looking at the video, you know, seeing where I left off and checking for nudity and drug use, uh, well, I realized there's some things I didn't, be, wasn't clear on. So we'll get that to the end of the video. Anyway, so I, I, I remember I left off uh, talking about uh, these, uh, the jewel setting on the for the bounce. That was the setting. And all the others were uh, pressed in. Well, pressed in, but but what they did is they uh, back then they pressed them in and then they uh, sort of like uh, let's see if it's going to cooperate. Uh, sort of like, I forget, burnished, I think maybe is the word is, you know, they pushed material over the, uh, the jewel. Uh, you can see the way those rings, is, those are pushed in rings any way around the jewel. Or something like that. And the newer watches, they just push them in. I don't know why they burnished them. Uh, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Anyway, so, I had the, uh, where this is what's left. I uh, didn't take any of this stuff out, but uh, this is has a. Uh, let's see if you zoom in again. This has the uh, the pallet fork they call it type movement. I don't know if you can see that. There's the pallet fork. Oh yeah, this is the uh, let's say mainspring barrel, center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel, pallet fork balances somewhere over here. I always remember one, two, three, four, and then the escape wheel. That's the way I remember it. Uh, but before they did the palace fork, they had a lever type, which I found a watch, another Elgin watch. It has the uh, the lever type escapement. Uh, well, maybe I gotta rotate this. I'm trying to get them both in side by side comparison. Uh, these are both Elgin's. Mm. This Elgin was made, uh, I forget how many years later, the one on the... Uh, so there's the... I wonder if it gets them both in focus. Well, let's see if we can rotate this. Hmm. Let's rotate it like that. And we'll put this one there like that. Okay, see so now it's confused. The camera's confused because they're both at different levels. We don't want to confuse the camera any more than we have to. So I'll just put this one down. Oh, the rock and rolls because I didn't take the cannon pinion off first. Let's, now I'm going to need that. Prop it up with the key then. Yes, I prepare for these videos. Oh, now it's not even in the range of the camera. Profanity. Anyway, so there you got side by side. You have the uh, pallet fork deal. And then you have the uh, the lever deal. And uh, with the pallet fork, well, I figured as the, uh, the centers of the uh, pivots are in line, but uh, with this one, yeah, well, they're sort of in line, but uh, really, I consider this one like tangent, where it contacts, and this one's in line. I mean, I gotta zoom in on that junk. Oh, well, you can also tell by the plates. Top plate. This one is, uh, where'd my pointer go? There it is. Yeah, this one is the, the lever, so you have the balance, you have the pivot for the lever, and then you have the banking pins that are over here. 
And for the pallet fork, it's uh, well, you got the balance, you got the pivot for the pallet fork, and then the escape wheel is over here. And then the banking pins are between the pallet fork and the escape wheel. It's all, it's all three, three jewels on a line in a sense. Well, the other one just has uh, two jewels in the line. That's how you can tell without taking the damn thing apart what's underneath the hood, as they say. Well, let's see. Wait, maybe we'll just do a uh, close up. Yeah, so this is the lever. I'm going to use the tweezers. So yeah, there's the lever and the jewels are contacting here and here. And this is the, I guess, the power fork. And you can see the jewels are on this side instead of on the, that side. This is the modern way. So that's the type of escapement, I guess. They, I don't know if that's a type of escapement or that's just the, the way they do that. So, okay, so now I can push this stuff aside. Since I'm done using it, I have to put this watch back together. It doesn't work anyway, so. <laughs> I'll put it back together later. So I can get this show on the road, as they say. Anyway, so now I can take, uh, I'm going to remove all the uh, bits and pieces, parts. Let's move this close. No, I should move it further away. Anyway, wow, I need another container. I'm going to use this container. Uh, so this is, you got a pallet fork. It's got the, uh, as you can see, it's got that extra stuff. Counterpoise, I think they call that. But I don't do that anymore. And the escape wheel. Well, you can see if we put it in the white. There it is. It's brass. Uh, they also make them out of steel. I think the good watches, they make them out of steel. The railroad grade has to be steel. What's this one? This is the third wheel. I have to say, looking at all these parts in this watch, this stuff is it's clean. I mean, usually I, some of these watches I get looks like someone opened it up, threw up inside it, and then closed it back up again. But this stuff is clean. And we'll have to remove the cannon pinions. I got a cannon pinion pull. Let's see if it functions. See, those things are in the way. Something's in the way. Let's put it like that. Let's see, I got a cannon pinion puller. It says it's a cannon pinion puller. I believe it is. You can also use it as a hand puller if you have enough clearance. So it's one of these squeeze ones. Ah, can I get that off? I don't know if it's going to work. Well, they say it's for, uh, what's that? That's the Unitas. I don't forget the name, number of the watch. You know, let's see. I don't know if this is going to come off. Well, I should really remove that. But this didn't want to come off. Oh, there you go. A little bit of uh, stickiness. Where did I put this stuff? I think I put it here. Wow, look at that. That's worn. Huh. Worn a lot. Now, I don't know if I can get this off. Because uh, you need a amount of clearance underneath it. Huh. Ah, the, spring, the spring plunger doesn't go down. Why does it not go down enough? Oh crap, I can't, I can't use this then. Yeah, because this was made for like uh, a smaller watch. 
so it doesn't have the clearance. Yeah, I can't use this profanity. Damn it. Uh, I guess I have to take that off some other time then. I don't know if I can pry it off. Say I put those tools away. I thought I could just pull it. Let's see. It's gonna give me grief, I'm not gonna do it. I'll do it another time. Let's see. I'll use these two. And the plastic, you gotta put the plastic on it also, it's just gonna shoot away. Let's see if we can get this off. If it doesn't come off easily, then I'll do it another time. Do it off camera. See, there's not that much... Oh, there you go. Well, that was easy. Profanity. Uh, good. Usually those things are on there like crazy. Candid pinion. Uh, I'm going to put that over here. And then the center wheel drops out. The center wheel has, I believe, the safety pinion on there. You can't see it, but uh, this something on there. Yeah, it could the, uh, the pinion there. Where is the pointer again? The pinion on there is free. F f it's not attached. It's just on, a sh on the shaft. But then they have a nut-like thing on top that uh, it gets tightened. You know, because it uh, screws the way the uh, the, the you know the watch runs. But then when the mainspring barrel goes the other way, as when the mainspring breaks, this nut on top will unscrew with this uh, pinion, and so the thing will just spin harmlessly. I don't know if I can take that off or show it to you somehow. Let's see if it, uh... Oh, no, it's on there good. I don't want to screw around with it. I forget which way it turns. If I remembered which way it turned. Wait, this thing turns this way. So it has to go that way. So that means it should unscrew this way. Uh, I can screw with it. I don't, I don't want to break anything. But anyway, that's the way. Because I saw this on another watch. I'll have to look at it carefully. I don't want to break anything. And I think that's it. Oh, I didn't take off the click. That's what I gotta do with the click. Oh wait, let's see if this screwdriver works. Yeah, it's wide enough. This is the click. Well, that one wasn't tight at all. from both sides, in a sense. Well, it wasn't that tight either. And, see, it's got the two numbers, too. Five, five, last two digits. What else is there? There's a mark there. I don't know what that mark is. And... Let me put that in there. And there is the ratchet wheel and the click and the click spring. Let's see if we can take this out without things flying. And there's a little pinhole. And I stuck my pin in there. I just moved it uh, clockwise and then it released it. 
I'm gonna hold this down with the toothpick just in case anything wants to fly. Oh no, it doesn't. Well, this thing is clean too. Ah, let's see if this comes out easily. Oh yeah, it does also. And the spring. Oh, the spring looks like there's some sort of... Does this come out nicely? Nah, not really. Let me see if I... I don't want to use my tweezers to pry. That's not nice. What about this screwdriver? Yeah, this doesn't want to come out easily. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna scratch the damn thing up. I'll get it out later. Maybe it'll fall out. Hmm. That's that. I think that's it. I think that's it. So anyway, one thing I wanted to see were the serial number. Like a good German rifle, they number all the parts. We got the 5.5 five here, we had the 5.5 five five on the uh, cover there for the click. We had the, uh, the, click, the serial number on here. I didn't open up the mainspring valve, but uh, I'm going to double check that. And then uh, the balance cock has a serial number. So I think all this watch is pretty much original except it's missing the uh, Geneva works. They never put a serial number on the dial. Oh yeah, and a serial number on the uh, was on that too. Okay, well that's pleasant. So, I think that's it. Uh, we'll do a group shot and then I'm going to talk about some stuff I should have talked about better. Whee! Oh, there's the group shot. Let's see. Uh, this is milk container, and this is a uh, fruit punch container, and that's milk container too. I think maybe that was 1% and that was 2%, I forget. And another fruit punch container cap. Very good. Uh, what else? Oh, well, one last thing. I wasn't too clear on certain things when I reviewed my video, so. Uh, I talked to my uh, graphics department and... Uh, I whipped up something on the back of an envelope. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is about the, uh, you know, single roller and there's the uh, double roller. Uh, that's at the end of the uh, the fork or the lever. At the pin that sticks up and it mates with that and that's the roller jewel that goes into there. And this is a side view. That's where the little cut out is in the jewel. So this pen can only pass by when it's uh, in the clear here. And then on the double roller, hmm, they got two. They kept the jewel one here with no cut out and then there's the what they call the safety roller. And then the, the pen is hanging down below on the uh, pallet fork and it has to clear through this. Well that was easy. And another thing is um, Oh, I didn't talk much uh, about the balance. Yeah, the, the balance. Yeah, this one had a solid balance, and, uh, and then they went to well. They realized that the, with the hairspring, when the temperature changed, the hair properties of the hairspring changed, so the watch would gain or lose. So they came up with the compensated balance. Do I have one here? Yeah, I showed you one before. Here's another one. And there is a... Well, it's bimetallic, if you want to be correct. Uh, the inside is steel. The outside is brass. They welded a steel tube and a brass tube together. And then uh, here is where the cut is. So when the temperature changes, you know, coefficient of expansion of the steel and the brass are different, so the uh, arms would uh, flex in or out. And it would uh, compensate for the 
change in the hairspring. I believe when it got colder, the hairspring would uh, make the watch run faster. So to compensate that, when it got colder, yeah, the brass would contract more. So since it's on the outside, the these arms would go out a little bit on each side because it's, you know, the same. And the uh, larger the diameter, the slower it went. And then, uh, you know, when it got hot, the uh, hair watch would run slower. And, of course, coefficient expansion, the brass would uh, move in. You know, these little arms would come in a little bit. And then with the uh, smaller diameter, in a sense, and the watch would run, you know, compensate for the hairspring change. And they got the little weights there that they put around there to uh, cover. Chip. Uh, well, they usually tested at, like, I think 34 and... Maybe the other temperature was 90, I forget. So that's what they did. Compensated balance split. Now sometimes, what'd they do? Here's the other watch. They got sneaky. And here's a balance. You look at this balance quickly and say, oh, it must be compensated because it's got the little weights and stuff and it's brass and steel. But there's no cut in the rim. So in a sense, it's just a solid balance. I don't know if it does any kind of compensation or they just got lazy and cheap and they spit this one out just to satisfy people. But so the, there's a bimetallic balance with the little weights, but it's not, I don't think it's compensated. And then, uh, let's see, we'll go, what is this watch? Oh, why well, didn't talk about the little weights. Most of the little weights are made out of brass, but uh, on, the, on the watches that are really good quality, I think these weights are... What are these weights? I think these are brass weights. I think. I thought I had a watch with gold weights. What did I do with that watch? I don't know what I did with it. I thought I had gold weights. What did I do with that watch? That upsets me. You know, I, I thought I was looking at found the watch with the gold weights. Yeah, darn it. I don't know what I did with that watch. I thought maybe it was this one. No, I don't know. Yeah, I can't find it. I lost it. No, I didn't lose it. I don't know where I put the thing. It stinks. Anyway, yeah, sometimes the weights, most of them are brass, sometimes it's gold or platinum too and then eventually uh, okay here's the latest uh, this one is a balance and let's see it's a solid balance but uh, by this time they uh, changed the material of the hairspring so it's not affected by temperature basically so I don't need a split balance anymore they made it solid again I don't know if this balance is stainless steel or something else, but anyway, it's a solid balance because they don't need to compensate anymore because the material's got that much greater. I think these, are these wheel. I think these, uh, these may be gold. Are these gold? Let me look. Yeah, I think these are, these are gold weights. Yeah, these are uh, the gold weights on the balance. We usually tell the gold weights because you know they they're nice and shiny. They keep they have a color to them. So that's what they ended up doing. And eventually they just got rid of the little weights because that costs money, you know, to make all those little weights. So that's the uh, the balance deal. I'm trying to put this cover back on so I don't lose it. Anyway, so uh, I think that's it. I think I uh, spent enough time on this. Uh, we'll do one, one more group shot again. Yeah, and then we'll call it a day. Anyway, so uh, thank you for your cooperation. I hope you enjoyed the program. And enjoy the rest of your day. I thought I had something else. Nope, that's it. Okay, let's make this end at a uh, uh, good number. Uh, okay.